What's on your radar, Kim? Well, there's no doubt. Emotions are running very high in the war between Russia and Ukraine. People are upset, in shock, and disbelief. But one thing that isn't helping at all is the unbelievable amount of fake images and videos being spread, not only on social media, but also by legitimate news outlets. I even made the mistake myself here on Rising on Friday when I stated I was impressed with Zelensky getting into full military gear to fight on the front lines. Turns out that was an image from last April. I fell for it. I apologize. Unfortunately, I'm not alone in falling for it. Bild, a political news outlet in Germany, shared a video of what looked to be a horrific bombing by the Russians in Kiev during one of their broadcasts. But it turns out the footage was from a 2015 chemical explosion in Tianjin, China. Newsmax used a photo of a crying older woman standing in front of her devastated home with the caption, the current devastation in Ukraine. But the photo was from 2015. An Italian news broadcast used footage from the video game War Thunder when talking about the war in Ukraine. No doubt viewers seeing a rain of missiles were horrified. So I want to go through some of the most egregious examples of the fake news circulating around, but I have to preface this because we are in a Western nation that is supportive of Ukraine in this conflict. The vast majority of the fake news that we see circulating is anti-Russian. So I'll be debunking a lot of this type of information. However, I have no doubt similar fake news is circulating in Russia and in pro-Russian countries, showing fake news that is disparaging of Ukrainians. We're just not seeing much of it, so I can't debunk it. So keep this in mind before you lash out at me and call me a pro-Putin Russian asset at the end of this segment. So let's start with what I think is the most astonishing example of fake news circulating. It was being reported that 13 heroic soldiers on Snake Island were confronted by a, a Russian warship. The audio recording shows the Russians telling the Ukrainians to lay down their arms to avoid bloodshed and unjustified deaths. The Ukrainians are infamously heard saying, Russian warship, go F yourself. It was then reported they fought valiantly until they were all killed by the Russians. President Zelensky even announced he would posthumously award the men medals of valor. Well, it turns out whomever claimed they had died was mistaken. Instead, the Ukrainian border guard disputed whether anyone was killed. And shortly after, video footage emerged of the Russians giving food and water to the 82 men, not 13, from Snake Island, who were then being transferred to Crimea. Some of the soldiers have now given interviews saying if the Russians wanted to bury him, they would have, and now they instead will go home to their families. Another shocking video was of a tank swerving in the street and running over a civilian car. Totally shocking video, jaw dropping. But thank goodness the person actually survived this crushing experience. Media was reporting this as a Russian tank and using it to show the callousness of the Russians and their invasion. But it turns out this was actually a Ukrainian tank that had lost control and accidentally ran over that vehicle. And I'm sure everyone involved was relieved that person was okay. Russian tanks are marked with white Zs, by the way, for future reference when you're looking at any video. Now, many of you saw the heart-wrenching video of the father saying a very tearful goodbye to his wife and daughter as he goes off to battle. This was being reported as a Ukrainian man sending his family to safety while he fights against the Russians. Well, the man is Ukrainian, sort of, I suppose. He's one of the rebels in the Donetsk People's Republic. He was sending his family to Russia for safety while he stayed behind to fight Ukrainian forces. The original video was posted by the mayor of his town several days before the Russians invaded Ukraine. And of course, I can't leave out the ghost of Kiev. There's footage of a fighter pilot downing several Russian jets. The video, of course, went viral with millions of views. The claims are this pilot took down six Russian jets in one day. But now, by the way, that number's jumped up to 10 Russian jets being taken down. Now, a fighter pilot who takes down five planes throughout the course of their entire career is called an ace. So to have six in one day or even 10 in one week is incredible. It's actually unbelievable, in fact. And it turns out the footage is from a video game called Digital Combat Simulator. But even with this video being debunked, the former Ukrainian president, Poroshenko, is tweeting that it's real and even shared a masked photo of the pilot. Uh, and, and there's a lot of wild claims going around of who the pilot is. The pilots, there's a lot of uh, talk that maybe the pilot's even a, wo a woman. And of course, it turns out that that old photo, that photo there is actually an old photo that's recirculated. So it's still unlikely the ghost of Kiev is real, but a lot of people fell for it and you can't blame them for wanting to boost up morale, I suppose. Now, the list of this fake news or fake videos and images just is endless on social media, totally endless. I could not possibly list all of them. Um, but one thing I do want to mention is that, you know, the reason why this is so dangerous 
to have all of this this fake video and and uh, circulating around and people believing it is that it is heart wrenching to watch. So when people see a Russian tank running over a civilian car, you know what they think is a Russian tank running over a civilian car, or they see um, you know just these really really heart wrenching and and or even callous videos, it raises up emotions to a level where that is uh, maybe too much, right? And this person thinks, oh, now I'm, I'm going to, I've got to fight. Things are worse than they actually maybe are. Uh, and, and it causes people to get highly emotional and it can flame, inflame a situation to be much, much worse. So uh, Robbie and Ryan, I'm sure you guys have seen many of the fake different videos that have been circulating online. Um, and it's tough to even know what is true and what isn't true. You know, I'm sitting there for hours like, researching just to make sure. And there was one, by the way, I do want to mention, it was a CNN, uh, and it said that this particular journalist was killed in, uh, you know, the first American to die in Ukraine. And then there was another image that was shown side by side on social saying, but CNN had also claimed that this person had died in Afghanistan. That actually, that was fake. It was from a fake account, a fake CNN account, making it look like they had said that this journalist had died in Afghanistan and in uh, the U.S. CNN never made. I mean, and in Ukraine, CNN never made that claim. So you have to like go in, right. you know, endlessly, exhaustively research this stuff to see what you see. Is it real? Well, social media is just so unreliable in situations exactly like this. In breaking news, uh, crises, natural disasters, war. Uh, yeah, you, you can't. You can't trust you know, what you see at all. And, you know, you're right to point out that this exact thing is happening on the pro-Russian side in Russia. But, you know, that doesn't mean we're not responsible journalists should absolutely call out the the kind of, you know, misleading or even del deliberately misleading in, in some cases yeah. to the extent it's trying to be a kind of propaganda. Um, right. And what, what's so dangerous right. is that this is taking an ancient phenomenon and then layering on top of it, you know, social media and, and video. There's that famous phrase that I just looked looked up who said it. It was Hiram Johnson, it could be our trivia. Hiram Johnson, <laughs> a progressive Republican senator from California, said the first casualty of war is truth. And he said that about 100 years ago. And that has been a phenomenon that has been consistent in wars you know, throughout human civilization, that, yeah. that the, the conflict and the emotion uh, just end up leading to a blanket inability of people to accurately relay what just what just happened, yeah. partly sometimes by mistake and partly deliberately to make your opponents look yeah. look worse. Now, and Robbie was talking earlier today, the, the problem with these confrontations is that you know as the escalations uh, move, pile on top of each other, you know one wrong move from somebody can send it spiraling into world war. Not just one wrong move, one wrong video that people think yeah. is a is a wrong move can right. send things completely spiraling out of control I, there's not much you can do about that other than as as consumers you know check out what you're watching don't don't share it if you don't know that it's don't don't know that it's true about uh, yes. Zelensky uh, though he I, and I get that those pictures you're right to point out were old pictures of him he he is he is down there, though, with, he's in the streets. He's in the yeah. streets with the troops, right? Right, right. and he right. Had, like I saw some, you know, right-wing people on Twitter saying, "Oh, there's yeah, those photos are fake, and there's no evidence he's even still in Ukraine." No, yes, there is. No, there, he's there he's is definitely actually, in Ukraine right, right now, right. and his right. life is in is in serious danger. The Russians are going to try to kill him. Um, I don't know about that. I don't actually agree that they're trying to kill Zelensky. I wouldn't go. I, I don't think that they're trying to depose the government. But I, but I do, you know, the, I thought, well, I mean, he was like in battle are. there. I don't they, know. Have they, they actually stated yeah, that they're they trying said to that, kill Zelensky? They said they, well, they've, they've said that they have no beef with the Ukrainian people or with the Ukrainian military. Their problem is the U.S.-backed Nazis that are, right. you know, right. illegally running Ukraine. So, I mean, he, he has said that that's his goal. Whether or not it is, I don't know, but he has said. I think they will, they will try to kill him uh, unless a, peach is, uh, a peace is reached before it gets to that point, which I very much hope is the case yeah. and might be the case. 
Um, so I want to. I have been monitoring um, the Russian. The I've been monitoring both the Ukrainian and the Russian side, especially on Telegram, and then doing a lot of translating. I spend all my time right now <laughs> translating post after post after post. And I will say that what I'm noticing when it comes to the propaganda. So what we're seeing on our side of it is Russians behaving badly in war, right? Like these atrocities and these terrible crimes that are happening and these heroic acts by the Ukrainians, and that's kind of the stuff that we're seeing on our end. Um, on the Russian side, I will say what I have seen coming towards them is that they're being obliterated. So it's like uh, like uh, the propaganda on on this side of it is to show the callousness of the Russians to make us want to fight harder against them. And on the Russian side, what they're seeing on their social media channels is the Ukrainians just clobbering them, trying to defeat their morale interestingly. So actually there was even discussion and the Russian government announced from what I can gather on Telegram, the Russian government actually thought about shutting down social media. Uh, they wanted to even shut down Telegram, but then they came out and announced, no, we're not going to shut it down because people were pleading with them saying, but this is how we're getting our information. So we need to keep this channel up. But they're really, really cautious about um, the, 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 you know, the, the fake news or the misattributed posts and whatnot and videos and images that are from previous conflicts, a lot of stuff that's, you know, there was like a bunch of a video of like dead soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, and it turned out that that was from like 2015, mm -hmm. you know, from a previous conflict. Uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting to see how the propaganda is being used on both sides to try to demoralize, you know, the Russians and also try to get people really angry at the Russians on this side of things. I, I, and I should add, actually, you know, it might be the case that they didn't really have a good plan for what to do, they being Putin, uh, the Russians, to what to do with Zelensky, because they might have just fully expected, and this wouldn't have mm -hmm. been an unreasonable expectation, that he would flee uh, the way yeah, it happened in Afghanistan. Yeah. It said, you know, the, the sort of when the U.S. backed regime kind of crumbles, there was very little bravery in the past. And when the Russian backed regime crumbled in 2014. Right. Yeah. yeah. The Kovic fled. Yeah. Exactly. So they they might they might not have really expected this this kind of outcome that he's showing what I think is quite unusual honor in the in the situation. So I just think that if you're going to kill a leader, you're asking for it. I mean, then suddenly you lose the support of everybody that maybe even kind of supported you. That's why I don't I don't really I mean, maybe they would in, they would take him, they would incarcerate him, then they would say now just flee because we're putting in our own government. Um, I just, I have, I mean, hey, well, listen, that, I mean, anything could happen. Yeah, you know? I mean, that argument would pertain to everything Russia's doing right now, and they're still doing it. So. Right, to some degree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you, Kim. Uh, we'll be back with more Rising right after this.